BBC News with Sue Montgomery. A former leading adviser to Donald Trump, Steve Bannon, has been convicted of two counts of contempt of Congress for defying a subpoena from the House Committee investigating the January the 6th attack in the US Capitol. He faces up to two years in prison. Nomi Iqbal reports from Washington. This all goes back to last October, when the committee investigating the January 6th attacks wanted to hear from Steve Bannon. They believe he and Donald Trump were in contact with each other when the riots happened. Also, the day before the attack, Bannon had said on his podcast, all hell will break loose tomorrow. He'd claimed executive privilege, arguing that his time in the White House meant he was exempt from having to give evidence. But this was dismissed by investigators because he had been fired by Donald Trump in 2017. The sentencing is due to take place in October. An agreement between Ukraine and Russia to allow grain exports out of Black Sea ports has been a welcomed around the world. The United Nations said the deal was a beacon of hope. The International Committee of the Red Cross called it nothing short of life-saving. Under the agreement, Russia and Ukraine have committed to ensuring the safe passage of cargo ships. Oleksiy Goncharenko is a Ukrainian MP and says grain shipments could start very soon. Next week, Odessa is ready to start shipments. Uh, and now we are just waiting for the ships to come and we are ready to uh, put grain inside and to send them to those who need this grain because it's millions of people who are starving or very close to starving today. The UK's outgoing Prime Minister Boris Johnson has assured President Vladimir Zelensky that British support for Ukraine will not waver, no matter who succeeds him as leader. The two men had a phone call to discuss the war. After the conversation, Mr Zelensky described Boris Johnson as a great friend of Ukraine. The White House says President Biden's mild COVID-19 symptoms are improving and is responding well to treatment. Mr Biden tested positive on Thursday. He attempted to strike a reassuring tone during a virtual appearance at a meeting of his economic advisers. The president's voice was lower than usual and he had a persistent cough. Tunisian police have used pepper spray and baton charges to disperse a protest in the capital, Tunis, ahead of Monday's referendum on a controversial new draft constitution. Several hundred people blocked a main highway and attempted to march to the Interior Ministry. Some carried placards reading the constitution will not pass and describing President Kais Saeed as a dictator. Police say a number of demonstrators were arrested. BBC News. The US state of California has introduced gun control legislation deliberately modelled on a highly restrictive anti-abortion law in Texas. The new measures will allow Californians to sue anyone who manufactures or distributes illegal assault weapons. The Texas ban encourages individuals to take legal action against people involved in carrying out or having an abortion after a fetal heartbeat can be detected at about six weeks. Cuba's National Assembly has approved legislation that will legalise same-sex marriages, civil unions and create measures to protect children from domestic violence. The bill also allows same-sex couples to adopt children and encourages an equal division of domestic responsibilities. The new family code will be put to a referendum in September. Vince McMahon, the head of the wrestling entertainment giant WWE, has announced his retirement. He had already stepped down as CEO and chair of the company because of an investigation into alleged misconduct. In a statement, Mr McMahon said that as he approached the age of 77, it was time to retire. NASA's new James Webb Space Telescope has revealed that there were ten times more galaxies, like our own Milky Way in the early universe, than previously thought. The world's most powerful telescope collects invisible infrared data that's made visible galaxies that existed soon after the Big Bang. Professor Christopher Consolis is an astronomer at Manchester University in England. It's going to really tell us things that we can only have dreamt about before, things about how galaxies formed in the early universe, about the first stars, about how basically all the structure in the universe came to be in a way that we really cannot do with any telescope or even approach the ability to do with any telescope which now exists. BBC News.